Alright, so vector projections is another topic. Now, I know what you're thinking. Are we doing shadow projections? Are we doing projection matrices? Well, not quite. A vector projection is not quite that. Um, a projection of a vector is a transformation which reduces the dimensionality by one, pretty much. So let's say we have X and Y axis, okay? And then we make a general sort of curve, okay? Now, if I were to project this onto the X axis, it would just look like this line interval. So let's go um, C, for, C for the curve, and we'll say this is the projection onto X of C. And if we project this onto the Y axis, it would look something like this. This is a projection onto the basis Y of the curve C. Very exciting. Well, this isn't quite what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is the projection of vectors. So I want, um, let me put my U basis vector, and then I want, um, I'll, I'll do a bunch of these. So we'll have V1, V3. So the way this works is I want to imagine, imagine flattening this V1 down perpendicularly until it sits on U. And it now has the direction of U and it has the appropriate length as if it were dropping a shadow onto U. This is the projection um, onto the basis vector U of the vector V1. Here, V2 extends beyond U, that's okay. Okay, so it dro we drop it down. It has the direction of U and it has the appropriate length. Here, V2, uh, V3 is opposite U, that's fine. Just imagine extending this the other way, okay? Uh, drop it up in this case. It has the direction of U, just reversed, and it has the appropriate length. So first of all, I'm going to go through this. Um, well, I'm going to go through all of it, aren't I? Okay, so we'll do another, do another example. We'll have U here. This is sort of the classic example that I like to do. So again, like I said, we're going to drop it down perpendicularly and there's going to be an angle between them. Two vectors will always have an angle between them. So we want to get this length. This bit here has the length of V and this whole length here is the length of U. Okay, so I guess it doesn't matter, does it? But anyway, we want to get this length. So this is by Pythagoras's, uh, not Pythagoras, by trigonometry. We have the hypotenuse as a length of V and we want to multiply this by cosine theta. That's the length there. So what, what we want to say is we want to say V, oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. There's different ways to say this, but the projection onto U of V is we want the appropriate length times um, the unit vector U because we want it to still have that direction. So when we multiply a unit vector, it just stretches it out to the appropriate length. Now, I'm going to rejig this a little bit. So I'm going to say, okay, length V times, I'm going to take U, and I'm going to say U hat is U divided by its length times cosine theta, and then well, I'm going to multiply and divide the top by length of u once more. And I'm going to pull that u out. The reason for that is that this part is the dot product. So I'm just filling in space, go over to the other side. 
this is essentially uh, the dot product of u and v divide by the length of u squared times um, the vector u. Or another way to think about it. Yeah, yeah, here's another way to think about it. Here's another way to think about it. We take v dot with the u normal, uh, normalized u. So in other words, this is indicating how parallel, what proportion of v is parallel with the direction u, not the vector u, but the, the normalized direction. And then we multiply it by u hat, because this is the stretching factor and this is the direction. But anyway, so that's very cool. Um, examples of the vector projection. Okay, so I'm just going to go through that, that first example again. So say we have a slope of some sort. That slope... Yeah, there it is. We have an object, a mass, sitting on the slope. Um, Gravity is pulling it down, but we want to know what is the sliding, what's the resultant force. So what we do is we say, okay, we sort of want to get the component here, which is parallel with the slope. So we say, okay, the resultant force is the projection onto the slope of the of the weight force, you know, weight equals mg. Um, and just to add a little bit extra, this weight force decomposes into two components. There's a component, a resultant, which is perpendicular to the slope, we call that like the normal resultant, and then a resultant which is parallel to the slope, we call that the tangent resultant. And it's this tangent resultant that that we want to calculate, that's given by the projection there, um, because that will be the component that moves, because this normal result will cancel out here, there'll be no movement there, but this tangent resultant will be the thing that makes the object slide. Anyway, just wanted to yep, get that. Is when I was doing real-time ray tracing, we have a plane, the plane has a center, and the plane has a normal, um, a tangent, and a bitangent vector. Okay. And we want to know, basically, this tangent vector has some bounds on it, a maximum and a minimum, and the bitangent has some bounds, a maximum and a minimum. We want to know, for a given point, is that point inside the plane? or outside the plane. So let's say we shoot the ray and it hits a point. What we want to do is we want to get the um, amount of tangent and bitangent. Okay. So what we can say is we can say, okay, the u vector is the, if we go center p, dot product with the tangent, that will give us the amount, amount that we are parallel within that. Now, if we multiply that with the tangent again, it would be a projection, but um, we can just leave it like that because we don't need a vector result right now. We need a parameter u. And similarly, if we to want to get the v, then v will be from the center to the point dot product with the bitangent. Okay, we have a bunch of bounds on that. Um, so for instance, if we go here to this point, let's imagine this plane extends infinitely, but we want to consider a constrained region. We go from the center to that point, 
That's pretty parallel with the tangent, not too parallel with the bitangent, but that u would be out of bounds. Anyway, hopefully this has been helpful. Just a few examples of using the vector projection. Anyway, see you again. Bye.